Hello, welcome to a new video. I popped up the dash, I have two hands. <laughs> That's weird. Um, today, I'm just going to put that back in there, otherwise, I will lose it. That's ADHD kicking in for you. Today, I've got is I might go through and make a list of what we need to do to get the wagon through its test. I'm going to write down, well, what I'll do is actually I'll go and write down everything that I know once done to start with and then what I might do is I might go through the rest of it and see how it looks. Right, so I've got a piece of paper. I'm inside because of, because of the wind. So first off, I know we need steer tyres. So, uh, 295, 80, 22.5s in date. And if anyone's wondering, yes I do have problems reading my writing sometimes. It's got a ABS fault where it keeps putting the fuse for some reason. ABS fuse fault. That says fuse, very scribbly. Boots. It definitely needs some steering linkage boots. Steering linkage. Let's put steering boots. I know what that means. Steering boots. Uh, what else? Seats and steering wheel. What's in the cab? Seats and the steering wheel. If you've seen Snatch, you might get that reference. Pedals work. I've got boots on the pedals. They're all okay. I need to put my carpets back in. They're sitting there. I need to put them back in. But I want to clean the floor and paint the floor before I put them back in. Let's get outside and have a look. See what else there is to look at. Just put some wind in there, just to get it aired up so I can go through it and see what I need. Look for air leaks and stuff like that. Well, I'm 90% sure she's going to want a mid-lift airbag on that side. This one seems all right, so I'm just going to take them over. That's why I've got it aired up and I can go through it. Uh, so let's put that on the list. I'll probably just have to put a new mud wing bar in. It's it's secure, but I wouldn't want to be sending it for MOT. So let's put drop wing brackets. Drop wing brackets. Uh, I'll get both sides of them, I think. Mid lift bags, like the lift bags, seem to be pretty good. They're covered in paint. So yeah. And back here, that bush is tired, but I don't think it's playing it. It looks tired, but. I think it looks tired because 90% of the time the wagon's aired down and it's pulling the bush. I might have to put a back plate on. I don't know whether that's MOT fail or not, but that back plate's tired. This is where it gets expensive. That one's not bad. I need to put a new shock tube on here. Cut this off and make a new one of them. It's not a big job. Airbags, they look a lot worse than they are, I think, because they're being painted. So I'll give them a clean off and see. Tank straps are all okay, so I'll check all them off. Air leak wise, I think we're pretty good because I've changed a lot of them. It's one of those, to be honest. When you're taking a wagon for MOT, especially a wagon you don't know, you don't really know until you get there what you think. So you can just, I can only do what I think, really. And plus, I'm not made of money, so I can't just go and splurge and buy all new bags all the way through it and stuff like that. So I'm having to work with the money I've got, the time I've got, and just hope and pray that it's okie dokie. Which you might again, you again, you might have seen in a one of the weekly videos. Um, my weekly, weekly video. I've got to repair this wire in here because this is fuel pump. I think it's because it was on ADR work, it had a, a fuel pump cut off. So I'm sitting in the office now and I'm just going through the actual government DVSA heavy goods inspection HUV inspection manual. So this. Tells you everything you might want to know. Reading through for the horn is not loud enough to be heard by other road users. Definitely do not have a problem with that one. <laughs> not with those train horns, huh? Definitely not. So I've just been through the, the list and there's things that scare me and things that don't scare me. A lot of it I've got to take as common sense. If it looks right and it is right or it looks alright, hunky dory. That's what I'm gonna do, really. I think 
I'm just going to go through the wagon, do what I need, no, I know needs doing. I might also see if I can get a friend, or see if there's any friends I have that would possibly be able to come and go through it with us, or on the channel. Um, and we'll go through it together and he can say yes, no, maybe, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. I've got a couple of people in mind, but I'll have to ask and see what they say. The, the worry is that it's going to get expensive and I don't have the money at the minute. I need to get a list together, speak to some people and get some bits priced up. It's next day, it's Tuesday now. I've got a price on a couple of bits that I've, or well, one part I need, which is good. Uh, I'm trying to find a set of steers, we might have a look at the ABS fault, which I really need to have a look at. So, saying that I'll need to get onto this ABS fault, I'm going to get on the ABS fault. Ah. <sighs> Fuse panel off. F30 switch positive ABS. Right, so it's a switch to positive ABS. And it is a five. To be honest, I did go through the wagon a while ago. I don't know if I put it in, in a content or not in the videos. But I went through the fuses and I found it had a load of fuses wrong. Where it's supposed to have five amp fuses, it had uh, 15s and seven and a half had 10s and stuff like that. So let's get this fuse in. Put the correct fuse in. I changed all the fuses to the correct fuses now. Just tried turning the ignition on with the fuse unplugged and it went pop straight away. I mean the relay unplugged and it went pop straight away. Bang. So we need to find out why she's fusing. While I'm in here I'm also trying to change the side, the, the roof markers from being permanently on with the master switch. So as you can see it's not dark. I've carried on as long as I can. I've ended up pulling all that dash out. It's sitting there. Um, yeah, I'm no further forward. I now know that if that's unplugged, it doesn't blow the fuse. But I don't know where the wires go. And they're red with green tracer, and there is about a million red with green tracers. I've just got to keep going, find out where it goes. This is where it'd be really handy to have a wiring diagram, but I don't have one. So I'll figure it out, I'm sure. Well, we're into Thursday now. We're still diagnosing that. Um, ABS fault, which is, I can't get the bottom of it, it's doing my head in. So I managed to fix the night heater, got that running nicely, toasty warm again. What it was, was I don't know what happened, I think it's because I've been trying to prime it, it been getting diesel and then not igniting and burning it off, so it ended up flooding itself and then it wouldn't ignite itself because it was soaking wet with diesel. And I actually left it running at one point and it just kept running. I was like, okay mate, it'll clear itself out. It didn't. It just filled itself with diesel. It filled the burner with diesel. And then filled the exhaust full of diesel. Different clearing out now, mate. Seems to be diesel there. So I got a nice little running and I'm gonna slay I run, get that exhaust cleaned out because it's like having a garden a nighty there. It is a it's a smoke he is. Start one of these. <laughs> Uh, it's all fun and games, isn't it? At least I should be nice and warm now when I'm working in it. There we go, I made me cup there. Just cleared. Funky dory. Now I'm going to jump inside and get warm. So, good news, found the wire. That's the wire there. Did you do plugged in my thingy? It's dark, so I'm going to use a torch. Everyone's doing there, and then doing under the carpet. Goes under the carpet, then runs along, under the bed, comes out to there, runs all the way along, and then goes to the to the ABS module there. Now, I know, it, uh, that's a very long-winded way to go to get wires over there. Question is, is the wire faulty because it's it runs underneath here, underneath the carpet, or is it just the module's faulty? Hindsight is a wonderful thing. I should have just pulled the module to start with. But, me being me, I've done things backwards and hard way. So I'm with just to have a check on the, the wagon because I want to see if there's a bush moving on the back end. That's what's there. Make sure that need, doesn't need to change the frame of tea. So I've just got that stand watching it while I rock it on the foot. Right.
that's good news. So there's no play in the bush, which I'm happy about. So I don't have to replace that. Winner. Well, unfortunately, I've been looking underneath it and I'm going to have to put the donut bags on for the mid-lift. These ones, because they are tired. This one is, I've just noticed it's starting to get a couple cords coming up to here. If you look, that, can you see that line there? Right where my finger is. Yeah. That's not supposed to be there, so fortunately these are knackered as well. And get them. And to be honest, I'll probably put them to get. Uh, I've asked for money for my birthday. Because my birthday on Monday the 19th, which is next Monday. And I've, I think I'm going to just get money towards everything so I can put money towards getting the bags and getting her towards MOT so we can get her out to the truck shows. Just going to pull this bag off before I go on because I can. It's 2.14s. I've already pulled this pipe out. Them off. I've already cracked these ones off anyway. Got two at the top, and that should be the bag lift now, like. Look at these ones, I'll take them the bottom. Pop the window to it. Ta da! So that's it, dude. That's how they work. What they do is they. Obviously, I'll squeeze the air with. So that's doing un uninflated, so that lets the, the suspension sit um, down and rest on the actual airbag. And when you put the, put the lift axle in, it airs this up, which expands and then lifts the axle up on a fulcrum point. Really clever and simple. Yeah. I think I'd, I'd feel better putting them on. Yeah, it's knackered. Look at the state of that. That's a shame. Well, some good news. I got the new ABS module. Well, second hand new. From my breakers. It's from a DAF. Hopefully it works. It's the same part number. Fingers crossed. I think this one's been buggered when it's had the wrong fuse put in it. Because this fuse here, fuse 30. It's supposed to be 5 amp. And it had a 15 in, so... Yeah, if you imagine a 15 amp going through all the gubbins in here, it's fried something in here. I might be able to get it out repaired if this one falls, it falls flat on its face and doesn't work, but fingers crossed. Well, the new module's in. I've remade this wire here, which is an earth cable. It's got an EUF sticker on it, so I put it back in. But I made, I put a new terminal on and soldered the ends up so it should be, and put a new screw in, so it should be nice and, and earthy now. Let's try it. Fingers crossed. Turn the power on. Good news, it didn't pop the fuse, so if I pull that out, and to say this is a 3 amp fuse, that is still okie dokie. Start there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> that light to go out. Light hasn't gone out. Why? Why is the light not gone out? Let's press the button and see whether we have a flash code for it now. So let's see, I need to press the button. There, ooh, ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. And it starts again. Right, so the code is 77. <gasps> but we've got flash codes, because before we didn't have flash codes. Get it. So fixed one thing. Now it's on the fixing the next thing. But should be able to fix, because I can know what it is to fix. My code's coming up as 77. Which if you go off the uh, 24 volt WAP code. This is a basic one. If you go down, seven, 71, nope, 72, nope, 73. It goes up to 76 and then goes to 8. So I'm going through, I've got the Wabco workshop manual now. I've managed to find that. Now I'm going through, I've got a clear mode and I've just got to follow the instructions and see what happens. But I hold the button for three seconds and that'll flash and I'll come back to you if it works or if it doesn't work and we'll figure out what's going on. So I've been reading and I've gotten, I've cleared the code and it's given me another code. 
which is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That'll go blank, four seconds. And if you look up on the tinty webs, one, a six key is left rear drive axle. Well, we've got no further forward with it yet. So it flashes now six times, which on the thingy comes up with that rear axle. I can't figure out what on that rear axle. And as you can tell, it's dark. I can't see properly. It's dark, it's getting cold, so I'm gonna call it a night. And I'm gonna come back tomorrow in the daytime and have a look. Well, I've got progress on the ABS. And I was speaking to, or well, I can't remember, was it Rich? Someone on the ERFRFs page, thank you very much for commenting on it and giving me the information that I needed. There was a couple of you commented, thank you very much. He pointed out, have I driven it yet? Which I haven't. And of course, usually when you've got an ABS fault, if you've reset something or redone something on the ABS, you need to drive the vehicle, get it up to speed, I think it's like eight kilometers an hour. Get the old bag, we're gonna just throw it in place. And it'll do the job for the minute. It's only gonna go up the road and back. And get us started. Of course, I pointed up there for you. Because who doesn't love a good cut start? That's got to be one of my favourite sounds. That. Let's get out of a little corner now. I'm just going to drive it to the end. Eh? So it's still come up with the code seven seven, which there's no code for that in the ERF manual, but there's the code for that in the Wabco service manual now you try and find and that comes up as the brake pressure sensor now i've got to try and find the brake pressure sensor on it now i don't know where that is so i'm just kind of going winging it and guessing so i've been doing some progress with the, the abs again don't know if we're getting there or not but it, it's got the flash codes still coming up uh the light's not gone off and i've got that turn the ignition on because you can hear two ticks when you turn the ignition on from when now I've put the new ABS module in and I lay underneath while that turned ignition on and it's the it's the actuators ticking in the order they should go in so it's supposed to go up one two three four so driver's front passenger rear driver uh, passenger front driver's rear that's how it's supposed to go but I'm only getting two ticks on the front, nothing on the back end. So I need to figure out why there's nothing happening at the back end. <sighs> we will get to the, to, the, to the bottom of this. We will. Got to. No, I've got to do for test. So, I was not going to lie. I was going through the edit and realised that I haven't filmed the end of the video. I've actually got the wagon booked in to go and be looked at by Lammies. They're going to plug it in. Because uh, they've got a diagnostics kit which should be able to read that Wabco. ECU or module and tell me what's wrong better than the blink codes will because I'm kind of I wasted a day I wasted a day looking at it so I'm just going to plug it in for his so I've got to run over there next week cuppa and I'm making coffee and put milk in first you don't put milk in first for a cup of tea so that's it for this video because we have got a couple of jobs done uh, I did manage to get the roof markers fixed. I've lost the footage for that. It's somewhere. I don't know where I've put it. It's a shame. The roof markers are now on uh, switch instead of permanent live, so they're not on with the master straight away. Uh, I've fixed the, uh, well, I fixed one ABS problem, and we've got to look into the next ABS problem, which I'm going to take a Lammy's for. They're going to plug it in, and I'm going to have a look at see if I can fix it, if they can tell me what it is, which is good. The airbags are coming, that'll be in the next video, and I don't know. It's, it's been progress, but not as much progress as I would have liked. If you didn't watch the new weekly video, I've got some new stickers. So they'll be coming to um, the shop whenever I get that set up. Might see look setting set them up tonight, actually putting money towards your birthday so actually birthday will be yesterday this is coming out on tuesday the 20th birthday is monday the 19th so dory get some money get them sorted and away we go but now i'm going to finish my edit get this uploaded and ready to go up and i'm going to enjoy me cut hope you enjoy the video 
Come back next video. Hopefully more progress to the ABS and also fit in the airbags, stuff like that. Woohoo! Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe. The ERF is coming on nicely. First truck show is booked. Lincoln Truck Show, 4th to the 6th of May. Lincoln Showground. Hope to see you there if you're there. And then I'm also planning on doing Convoy in the Park. Convoy in the Park. Might do Newark. Maybe a couple locals. We'll see. Depends on money situation. So yeah, hope you enjoy the video and we'll catch you all soon. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons and leave comments in below and and yeah. Throw off for now.